So a couple of people have asked me to make a team building video for advance or ADV, or if you're new, then those terms refer to the third generation. And I figured, yeah, I could do that. And that is in this video. But first I wanna go over all these tabs I have open, which are all linked in the description. And they are tools to help you learn advance on your own. And with their help, you'll be able to get out on the Gen 3 ladder and start playing the best Gen 3 players there are. So, we will jump into it. Now, so if you've never played Advance before, my recommendation is to watch a few games of it first. So, you can go to the most recent edition of the Smogan Premier League and just control F ADV and there are nine weeks of five games and then there are three more after that two semis one finals so that'll give you an idea of what's used now disclaimer it's not going to give you a perfect picture of the metagame because a lot of players in SPL like to use surprises uh, that are less consistent metagame choices and more surprising for one-offs. That's not to say they're only good in one-offs, but say something like Slacking is not going to be a consistent tournament winning Pokemon. But once in a while it can do some big stuff. That's what I mean. So you can, this is the most recent edition of this tournament, so it's up to date. You can go look through past editions of this tournament or it just, uh, flip around the tournament section and look for some more replays there. And there's a lot of great advance to soak up. Other places you can go is the global tournament section on Pokemon Perfect, and you can go to Kalos Invitational Tournament 3, right here. Uh, this was the biggest advanced tournament before the latest edition of SPL, and it has the best advanced players around, and all the replays you're heart could possibly desire. So uh, that's where you can start just to observe the metagame and from there you can, once you're a little more acquainted with the tier, then you can come back to those replays and start analyzing them. So, But first you're just gonna look at uh, the replays and you're gonna say to yourself, uh, alright this is a good one, so what tends to get used? Skarmory, Suicune, Skarmory, Blissey, these are all top tier OU Pokemon, so you get the idea. The Gengar is a big one, Swampert's a huge one. So, let's say you want a more organized way of looking at what is good in the tier. So, the viability rankings are very current. They're actually in the process of being updated for the current year right now. This isn't a set in stone thing across the year. This is what's currently dominating. Like for example, Breloom is experiencing a huge uptick in usage right now, so it's going to be higher. So uh, here you see a lot of posts from very experienced players and they're explaining why these Pokemon are good and uh, what they do, how they work, things of that nature. So that can, if you like to read about this stuff, then you can feast on this right now. And you can go back 18 pages, although it spans six years, so. Uh, yeah, that's, those are uh, the viability rankings and they are current and they are accurate. So we'll go over these. Uh, Quick, later before we get into the team building thing, we'll go over quickly what everything does. Uh, just a quick summary, just so you get an idea. Just so you don't go, um, oh, Aerodactyl, that must use, I don't know, special attacks or something. <laughs> Bad example, but uh, yeah. So, what else? We've got uh, tournaments for you to join yourself as well as playing on the ladder. And, oh, this is what I want to get to, the ADV threat list. Now this is quite old. This is before Moltres 
was part of the metagame, so, and which it would be here on a current version of this, but bear in mind, this is seven years old, but if you're asking yourself, okay, well, I want to know what sets these Pokemon run, I can know that Tyranitar and Gengar and Metagross and Swampert are top tier Pokemon, but what moves do they use? In particular, Gengar, uh, Gen 3 does not have the physical special split of Gen 4 and beyond. The special types are Eeveelutions plus Dragon. So, Flareon, Vaporeon, Jolteon, Espeon, Umbreon, Glaceon, and Leafeon. So, Fire, Water, Grass, Electric, um, Ice, Dark, and Psychic. And Dragon, of course. So those moves are special. And Gengar is Ghost and Poison, so how is it going to use Stab? The answer is it doesn't, but if you're a new Advanced player, you might be thinking, well, alright, it uses special attacks because it's got a great special attack stat, but it doesn't use its stabs, and the answer is yes, it does. So, uh, but you will probably not have a way of knowing that. I mean, once, you'll wa once you watch those replays, then sure, you'll get an idea. Oh, I see Gengar using Will-O-Wisp and Ice Punch a lot, but can I get some concrete information on those sets? Well, the ADV threat list is not going to give you the exact copy-paste, but it lets you understand what exactly the Pokémon's role in the metagame is. That and the discussion posts in this thread, especially the latest ones, are going to help there. But these are... this is a summary, and even though it's very old, it's still accurate. I mean, I would discount the Dusclops mention. It is not a staple on dedicated stall teams. That is way in the past. And, but everything else is pretty much there. Uh, yeah. Nothing else there that really shouldn't be. So, uh, this is good to browse. And, of course, on the Smogan site itself, then if I could find it. Yes, okay, so this is the OU tier. So, this is every Pokemon in OU and its analysis. So we can go to the Aerodactyl analysis. Now, bear in mind, some of these analyses are outdated, and we are working on them at the time of this video. And uh, so, so keep checking back, but most, for the most part, just keep uh, keeping up with the discussions in Ruins of Alf. There's always something going on there, especially in, uh, for example, this little synergies thread I made, a lot of people contributing advanced stuff in there, so you can go there, and in general just flip through Ruins of Alf for new posts. But yeah, so for to give you a basic idea, then these will work. So, Aerodactyl, I mean, this is Aerodactyl for you, and you can read out what, read about what it does, and why it is good. So, uh, most of these are going to be roughly accurate, even if they're not fully up to date. Like, Call Mine Blissey is no longer the number one set, but it's still Blissey and it's unbreakable and it uses support moves and stuff like that. So, I mean, the Celebi one is pretty outdated, and for that I would rely more on the modern replays, but uh, we're working on it. So, some of these have been updated. So, for example, the Moltres one, I'm very proud of the work we did together with the... Uh, quality control team and to get this analysis written so now this is a very accurate summary of Moltres so some of these are super up-to-date Metagross this one is also superb and uh, so so is Moltres and I think Swampert too Swampert is good and uh, Skarmory I think as well yeah this is up-to-date so some of these are old some of these are uh, new, but generally they will give you an idea of what the Pokemon does and what sets it runs. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I will gobble them up. So, now you know what these Pokemon tend to run, in addition to that. Uh, and if you wanted, if you liked watching those advanced games, then from the latest tournament in SPL, then I myself decided to write a lot about them and the teams I used and some other stuff, just general metagame stuff, so if you're looking to get into advance, it has never been a better time. There's so much to read. There's usage stats to analyze. 
So Zamog also went over his teams, and I was hoping others would do it as well, but they did not. So, but there's still this excellent post from Vapikuno. So let's say you've gotten into the tier, you've watched a lot of replays, you've uh, even decided to dabble on the ladder with some sample teams, which I should have mentioned. Sample teams, uh, Runes of Valve sample teams. These are quality control, quality checked by several players, including myself. So, while I'm not going to pretend that each of these teams is perfectly ideal against all matchups or anything, that's ridiculous, they will get the job done in terms of helping you get into the tier. They will let you know the basic archetypes of the tier. So will the sample teams in the Advance OU subforum on Pokemon Perfect. There's only three right now, I'm sure they'll add more. But they're also good teams. And they also come with descriptions that help you learn about the teams, so you can learn to use them yourself. The goal eventually should be for you to be able to build your own kinds of teams. Or your own teams in general. And, uh, but you can't just do that from scratch. So when you're beginning, when you're starting out, I would recommend using the uh, teams that have proven themselves to work. So if you want to even try to copy stuff from the SPL replays, then go for it. Uh, preferably the ones that are... They don't necessarily have to win because if two good players win, that, uh, if two good players play, then that means one of them's going to lose. But... Uh, the ones that seem to be able to handle the threats on the opposing team. And preferably stick with the OU Pokemon. Now, the Pokemon viable in OU is not just restricted to this OU list. As you, So for everything you might see, I would refer to the viability rankings. Because for example, uh, Venusaur, Hariyama, these guys are not OU. But they are very viable in them. Especially you guys like Breloom and Charizard, they're going to move up. So that is what the VRs are for. So, yeah, let's say you've gotten all that, you got your sample teams, and you want to play some tournaments. Well, this is invitational, it's for the best, the most proven, but if you just want to get in some tournaments, uh, besides the biggest ones that have some bar of entry, then you can go to the circuit tournaments, old gen metagame circuits, and there's a new advanced tournament coming up right around the corner. So you can just join the next one and see how you do. And they also have good players, so there's always something going on. So, uh, here, and on Pokemon Perfect, then... Did I... Oh, yeah, okay. So on Pokemon Perfect, then there's there are these tournaments. And as you see here, Austin Matitos is arguably the best advanced player around. I would say top two, maybe top three at worst. So, uh, the competition is really stiff. I actually did a video on the f uh, game one of the finals of this tournament. You can go check that out. It's uh, Asta versus the Linear Curve. And I guess I'll plug my own videos as a good advanced learning resource. I do some analysis on why the top Pokemon in the tier are good, and I play a lot on ladder now. So, if you like listening to me, then you're in paradise. Anyway, so there are lots of tournaments going on. Uh, the next qualifier will be up soon, before you know it. And you can play here. And lastly, I will mention the Ruins of Alf Room that you see here. Uh, it is a great place to learn some old gens. Good players hang out here. And there are casual tournaments all the time. Zero pressure. And on... Uh, some So... Every day in the Ruins of Alf Room has a different generational theme, but that doesn't mean that during some downtime in between the designated tour times, then you can't have another uh, gen playing. Like, for example, just because it's DPP Thursday doesn't mean that there won't occasionally be a GSC Ranbats tournament if people want it. But uh, if you're really looking to play some Advance, then Advance Wednesdays, then there will be several tournaments, not just in OU either, although if the focus is OU, then there will be an OU one pretty much all the time. So, And you can always just request one uh, and see if other people want it. Uh, you just say, can we get a Gen 3 tour? 
And yeah, and it doesn't matter what your time zone is because they have an Asian time zone, a European time zone, and a US time zone. Uh, they have tournaments for all three of those, so not to worry. Uh, yeah, that is mostly it, I believe. Oh, and let's say you want to start building your own teams. We'll go over that in... Um, we'll go over that, but Vapakuno has made this incredible thread. I mean, it is just a gold mine. And this will shed more light on the archetypes of Advance. So remember how I said that the sample teams in... Uh, this thread are gonna give you a good example they will but this is the this is goes way further I mean you don't have to get into the technical stuff if you don't want uh, because you can just skip down and start looking into the lead uh, the common leads and then you look at the archetypes and look at all these teams and pokes that fit on teams, and this will help you gain an incredible understand. Well, that makes it sound like too much of a guarantee that you'll become an overnight advanced genius. You very well might. Uh, I'm not going to tell you you're not, but I don't want to make any false promises. But this will. Uh, this has all the information you need to really understand the different kinds of variants there are. So, uh, yeah. Soak this up. Again, everything is in the description, and I'm open for any questions. So Synergistic Cores, uh, God, there's just so much here. It's wonderful. So uh, there's even some replays and analysis. Look at that. Can't get better than that. And there are even uh, other smaller... Uh, this is not as central to uh, the basics of advanced let's say but if you just go to the gen 3 thing then you can find a bunch of other great threads like uh, last year linear made this thread discussing the metagame and uh, some people say hey I have a team from two years ago is that outdated the answer is probably no it's an old gen things don't move as quickly and I I think even teams from several years ago are still viable just because at their core the Pokemon are still the same so while there are moveset tweaks and whatnot, then it doesn't mean that a team from a long time ago is suddenly unviable nonsense. Because at its core, Tyranitar and Metagross and Skarmory and whatnot are still going to be the best Pokemon. So you have this kind of thread, a lot of discussion about it, and uh, even something like this, which is just fantastic. Uh, if you're looking to branch out and get into rain, then sadly Sius is our resident rain expert. So you can look into that and uh, there's even other players talking about their teams from two years ago. Like, uh, look at this, two years ago in current OU I imagine that's not going to fly as much but like these teams are two years old and they're still good. So I mean maybe not as ideal as the trends that they were built with uh, those in mind. That was bad, I'm sorry. But at the same time, you know, they're still going to work. Uh, same with ZF's teams here. And you just have all the tools at your disposal and now you know where to find them. So this is not as relevant, but uh, yeah, browse and enjoy. So. Uh, we went over the archetypes here. Okay, so now we will get into the team building section. So, first, uh, my first uh, recommendation to you would be to decide what you want to build around. And this will probably influence, if not straight up determine, uh, what kind of team you're going to be running. Like, let's say you're going to run a team with Heracross, you're going to run some offense. So, uh, if you're just starting out, then you would look at the archetypes here, and 
you would see what Heracross generally works with. And if you want to soak up information from these replays, you can see games where Heracross got used and you can go, huh, uh, I have one in mind actually. So, sorry. Yeah, so you can look at these and say, oh, hey, I understand. Heracross does this, that, and the other thing. So, see, Heracross doesn't do so well against Gera because Brick Break and Intimidate, but it's still scary, etc., because it scares out Titar, hard to switch into, yada yada. So, and there's also a slacking. That's cool. So, yeah, now you would understand how those tend to work together from this, this thread, this thread, and uh, the replays in this one. And even this one. So all the their usage stats and uh, the replays are, I believe, yeah, they're the replays of the plans. So you can, and then in each win post, then uh, there are the replays. So. Uh, you have so now for team building, then Vaps thread does a great job. But just to give you an overview, I think it's not important to have a hard counter to everything on every single team. Otherwise, there would never be a team without Swampert. <laughs> but you definitely want to be able to cover threats. So the big threats I would recommend covering are. You don't even have to think of them as in terms of individual threats, but you want to check your physical attackers. So that means like Tyranitar, Salamence, Metagross. These are generally stopped with the water, but you got to be careful because Metagross can explode. So you got to have plans. A lot of advanced cover uh, team building is covering combinations. Like for example, Skarmory counters Snorlax really, really hard. But if your only Snorlax counter is Skarmory, then the opponent will also have Magneton and you will lose. So you have to have backups to Snorlax. And so, for example, if your team is a bunch of Pokemon destroyed by Salamence and uh, a Swampert, and you have nothing else to take on Metagross, then Metagross will blow up, or just HP Grass your Swampert, and you're toast. So... This comes with experience, and it sounds daunting at first, but it will come naturally once you start uh, playing and using those sample teams and the teams from the replays, and uh, the teams listed out in uh, this this thread. Oh, sorry, I lost it. But uh, yeah, the teams in the postseason advanced thread, and uh, you'll know what works, what doesn't, and a lot of handling threats is also playing like for example if you switch your Swampert into two choice band earthquakes from Tyranitar and then get swept by DD Salamence or Aerodactyl that doesn't mean your team was Aerodactyl weak it mean it meant you let Swampert get worn down way too easily so it's a fine balance to be struck so physical attackers these guys you got to be careful for guys like Heracross and Gyarados who are not typical physical attackers because they are not answered with water types but they have their flaws so uh, so physical attackers special attackers so this is uh, like Zapdos and then the Calm Minesweepers the trio of those Celebi, Jirachi um, what else so you got your physical attackers your special attackers you might want to be careful of the mixed ones too, because they hit on both sides of the spectrum. So, and those are again, Titar, Meta, and Ments. So just be careful of those, although those are more, you play around them, because if you don't have a Milotic, you're not hard countering them. So just be careful, you know, not every Salamence is going to be physical, some are going to be mixed. And uh, you will learn about that by watching replays. So, and getting out there and playing the game. Uh, disclaimer, Ladder has the good, has the best players around, for sure. 
but it also has some goofy stuff. So if you're facing a team of Medicham, Donphan, Dodrio, Crobat, then it's not going to be representative of the actual metagame. The, the stuff on ladder that looks most like replays from those tournaments is what you're going to want to base your understanding of the metagame off of. So you got your physical attackers, your special attackers. Gener rule of thumb, have a rock resist. and Because otherwise Aerodactyl is going to cut you down. Because it outspeeds everything except for Jolteon, who it speed ties. So, eh. And have a rock resist. Have a counter for DD Tar. Have some methods to play around it. Some teams rely on beating DD Tar by never letting it set up more than once and outspeeding it. So, we're just hitting it hard, never letting it come in, that kind of thing. But have a way of playing around it. Swampert is a good learning tool. Gives you that crutch you need to get started. So physical attackers, special attackers, Skarm Bliss. You need to be able to beat Skarm Bliss and friends. If your team cannot beat this, and a good team will be able to beat them, but you need to be able to beat these five together or your team is not viable. And I mentioned these five because the sixth can be anything from Dugtrio to Zapdos to Aerodactyl to... Uh, those are the... Oh, Starmie. Yeah. Even Metagross can really be... And, oh, Moltres is another big one. So, yeah. You, but these five are the core five of what make the team dangerous. They are... You could succeed in advance with just these five Pokemon. So you have to be able to beat them. So be prepared to break this core in your team building. So physical attackers, special attackers, walls... And uh, don't be overly destroyed by Dugtrio. That's a big one. That's a tough trap, pun intended, to not fall into sometimes because a lot of the best Pokemon around are grounded. But it is important to keep in mind that you have to have some. You have to have a way to punish Dugtrio at least. Like if Dugtrio kills your DD Tar, then that sucks. But if you have a DD Mence ready to get a free DD on it after, then that is perfect. So, uh, yeah, there's that. So, how do I make teams that have synergy? What's my offense? Do I just beat everything with residual damage? Do I just beat everything with uh, straight-up offense? Well, though, again, the different archetypes. I'm really letting Vapakuno do the work for me here, because uh, he's already written so much. But the idea is what kind of team you want to run. So if you're running Heracross, you're probably not running Spikes. Matter of fact, I can't think of the last big tournament game I saw Heracross on the same team as a Spiker. Because it just doesn't fit. Heracross's checks are flying type. And it's generally such a fast-paced offensive Pokemon that Spikes don't do that well against it. Spikes are mostly used... They can be used on offense, but they're used for Pokemon that really need the extra push against their counters. Like, suddenly Swampert and Metagross are kind of sweating against T-Tar with Spikes down. And that's because T-Tar destroys uh, flying Pokemon. So, works beautifully. Then, uh, the defensive stuff... Then you gotta keep your spikes, you gotta keep in mind the anti-spikes method, so rapid spin. Sometimes people use Magneton as their anti-spikes. Uh, yeah, so you will you can blend them together, so you don't have to run offense or stall. You can run Skarmory and even Blissey on offensive teams, but you gotta really bring the pain. So, uh, run your special checks, run your physical checks... Be wary of trapping and make sure you can break Scar and Bliss and friends. And I think that's more or less it. What you uh, so I think these are all the tools you really need to get into it. Uh, experience is the best teacher, and I guess you can experience secondhand all these big tournament replays. And so that helps. And then you can get out there and start playing for yourself and see what works for you. Because, like, right now, Blaziken isn't too popular, but there's definitely potential. So if you're observing the metagame and you're 
you know what you're looking at, and you're like, hey, Blaziken destroys Scar and Bliss per Titar Gengar. I mean, it just demolishes it. Then get out there, try Blaziken out, and it just might work. So, uh, if you have any questions, I, I know I wasn't very concrete with the team building thing, but this has gone on for long enough, and again, rely on the tools here, rather than just me rehashing those. So, uh, this video has been more about giving you the tools needed to get into it, get into the tier. So, uh, if you have any questions, I am super, super open to... Uh, answering and the links are in the description and so is my patreon if you want to you know that was shameless I'm sorry but this uh, hopefully will give you the tools you need to get into this wonderful beautiful metagame and yeah so pack your rock resists don't be destroyed by Doug trio be able to beat stall and that's pretty much it uh, so enjoy, thank you for watching, and you have all the tools, how you proceed is up to you. So, thanks guys, I will catch you next time.